ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lake Superior's Quality Innovation Network, Applying QAPI Principles, Solutions for Unintended Weight Loss Conference Call. Your host for today, Kathleen Lavich, will now begin. Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar presented by the Lake Superior Quality Innovation Network. The LSQIN is comprised of three organizations, MPRO in Michigan, Metastar in Wisconsin, and Strata South in Minnesota, to support the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services priorities for health care, quality improvement in each organization's respective state. I would like to introduce you today to today's speakers. First, we have Mary Johnson, Director of Nursing at Norlight Nursing Center in Marquette, Michigan. Then we have Amy Stager, Director of Nursing, and Jesse Arnold, Food Services Director at Spring Valley Senior Living in Spring Valley, Minnesota. We also have Ben Elliott, Director of Nursing at Munson Crocker Continuing Care in Grayling, Michigan. And then we have Lee Zabari, Director of Nursing, and Angela Bellini, Dietitian at Metalogist Milford in Milford, Michigan. And finally, we have Kathy Nichols at Stratus Health in Minnesota. At this time, I would like to turn it over to our first speaker, Mary Johnson. Mary? Good afternoon. Nice to be here. Um, we, uh, let me first start by saying I've been the director of nursing here for seven years, and anybody that says working in a nursing home is boring is out of their mind. And um, um, I, I guess what started this, well, when we started with LSQIN, um, we had a whole list of things that we wanted to work on, and it really was kind of chaotic initially. But um, going by the uh, quality measures, we narrowed it down to several projects that we have already completed and started on the weight loss um, measure in January of this year. Um, it seemed as though we had all kinds of information, but we weren't putting it all together and we weren't uh, really using it. So um, I got together with my assistant director of nursing, my um, dietary supervisors, uh, the dietitian, uh, one of the doctors that comes regularly here to Norlight, and we talked about how we could um, make this a project and use the information that we had available. Um, we started with EHR in 2013, and it's just been a blessing to um, our nursing home because of the information it can capture and the reports that it can uh give us back uh, regarding things like this. So we thought, well, we need to get organized and get this um, get this on track. So because we have always um, done a skin assessment on each resident's uh, bath day once a week, um, we already had information regarding vital skin, skin care, things like that, and the weight um, was always tracked on that. And anything uh, plus or minus uh, three pounds was reported to the physician and the dietary supervisor. Well, it didn't take long to figure out that um, it doesn't really go very far after that. So um, I have the dietary staff review a three- and six-month look-back report, which they can get from our EHR, uh, for significant cumulative gains or losses, especially losses. Um, this report goes to the registered dietitian uh, for modification and her recommendations as to what we can do to, um, you know, to, to correct this. And uh, then I realized that uh, we weren't actually using our EHR to the, its, its capabilities. Uh, sometimes uh, the weights weren't getting charted. Sometimes there, there was lack of uh, documentation of dietary being notified or physician notification or whatever. 
So we got busy on the education part of it. Um, we've had uh, several in-services with nursing and CNAs because the CNAs, of course, chart B flowers uh, every day at every meal and work to make it uh, more accurate documentation. And that has paid off for us, but, uh, you know, we're not not seeing a great reduction in our percentage since January, which is just, you know, not not too far off. But anyway, um, we uh, established weekly and monthly audits and reports that are reviewed by the whole team at our monthly coffee meetings. Uh, we also established a communication loop system by including all of these people in our um, in our team. And that would be nursing uh, to dietary, dietary to the RD, RD to the physician, MD to nursing, and nursing to Cenas, and then back. And it's worked very well. Everyone has a part in this. Everyone is a team member, and everyone has ownership. Um, once we discussed with the team, uh, we set our objectives at reducing uh, you know, unintended weight loss, out of control weight loss is what we called it at first, and um, found that they were more than uh, more than willing to participate, and our um, you know our, our documentation and our, our uh, information uh, is now probably one of the best that I've ever seen here. Uh, we did discover a couple of glitches with our EHR that have been fixed by the uh, company, and we found that those glitches were making our, um, setting our, our percentages off, and uh, once we got those, uh, got those fixed, we now feel we have very accurate reports and audits. So we had to, at the same time as establish this team, we had to streamline our EHR documentation, and uh, now it's it's much easier for our people to use. Um, we had to educate the staff on what information we needed and where it needed to go in the in the progress notes. Um, it, I check the progress of this on a regular basis. Actually, I get the uh, weight audits every week and uh, check, too, if there are any uh, missing entries. I take it back to the nursing staff that uh, was responsible for putting it in. I let them fix it themselves, and then I know that for certain they know how to do it. So if there's ever a question, I can show them where uh, or how to uh, how to enter it correctly. And, you know, it's, I'm not getting very many repetitions. Um, but I will keep checking it, and if it remains, you know, status quo, that would be great. But if it starts sliding back, then we need to consider changing up our process. Um, staff can see what the advantages and disadvantages of the process are for them. Um, if people are eating better, they're going to be, uh, they have more energy, they're going to do, use greater mobility. Um, another kind of coincidental thing is that we've reduced the use of uh, laxatives and suppositories and whatnot, um, which, uh, you know, saves time for the staff. And uh, also the, 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 the staff notes that a person is feeling better. Um, they're, not, they're not grumpy or they're not... Uh, you know, they're not crying, they're not crabby, or, you know, it, it's kind of a kind of a smiley process. Could you do the next slide, please? Um, my advice for others is be patient but persistent. Um, you may have to repeat the education process several times, but it's worth it in the end. And um, the, our registered dietitian... Um, and our physicians are impressed with our process, and they they like it. Um, residents seem happier, and family members are happy with the changes, and they like to see 
that their family members are uh, getting the nutrition that they need uh, to keep them healthy. Uh, you know, it's no longer the case where you bring grandma to the nursing home and she dies in two weeks. You know, we like our people to be to be happy and healthy. You have the next slide, please. Thank you very much. I enjoyed doing this. Thank you, Mary. That was fabulous. Okay, our next speakers are Amy Steger, Director of Nursing, and Jesse Arnold, Food Services Director. Go ahead. Oh, I have been the Director of Nursing um, for a full year, um, but I started at the facility and worked my way up um, to Associate Director. And Jesse has been at our facility for three years. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. You can go to the next slide. We decided that we wanted to focus on in just improving the overall dining experience. Um, meals and eating is a big part of, you know, our lives. We enjoy sitting down with our family to have meals. We enjoy going out for meals. So we wanted to improve that area um, to improve resident quality of life. Um, you can go to the next slide. So some of the things that the changes we made, we um, have a special every day where they're, you know, like if you go to a diner, they have the special of the day. So that's what we offer. Um, today our special was taco salad. Um, and then they have always available items like burgers, chicken strips, um, potato wedges, sandwiches, um, egg salad sandwiches, uh, and different things that residents can order off of if they don't like the meal that's the special item. Um, we have restaurant-style dining, um, so residents come into our dining room, their orders are taken on a first-come, first-served basis, just like you would in a restaurant. We have a six-week menu, menu cycle. Some of the feedback that we got was that there was a lot of um, repetitions of meals. So we used to have a four-week menu cycle, we extended that to a six-week menu cycle. Um, we have resident input on menu items. So one of the things that we have, just because of the population that we serve, is we have liver and onions menu um, every once in a while. It's not a staff favorite, but it's definitely a resident favorite. Um, and that was just purely from resident request. We seat residents by their preference. Um, so if they want to sit by the window or they want to sit by their friends that they've known in the community, we really um, allow them to sit wherever they want to. We have an enhanced breakfast menu. We have a meat of the day. And then on Mondays, we have pancakes. And every other day, you can get French toast, um, eggs made to order any way that you want them. We also have hot cereal, cold cereal available. Um, Sometimes hash browns available, so it's really a, a good sized meal that you could get in in a restaurant. We also have fine dining and theme meals. Um, so fine dining is we just pull out all the stops, make something that is, you would get in more of a more expensive restaurant. And then monthly we have theme meals. So the theme meal last month, what we're currently doing countries was Sweden. This month is Africa. Um, when we started, we started with Australia and we've done France. So we do different countries and provide meals like what you would get um, in, like what you would get in those other countries. And fine dining really came about um, because it was a resident request. We also have daily ICD team meetings. Um, all of our staff, well, not all of our staff, but me as a director of nursing, my nurse manager, Jesse as a dietary manager, and our activities director, we all go through the notes every day. And Jesse, um, you know, he really, I, I tease him that he's a Nazi of the, of, um, the weight because he's really on the weight. Um, you know, if he's noticing a trend up or down, He's bringing it to that daily meeting. We're not waiting until we're having a knee-jerk reaction. You can go to the next slide. Um, we do weight monitoring. Do routine um, weekly weights on everybody. Um, but if they're increasing or decreasing in weight, we will move them up to three times a week weights, daily weights, 
we try to put in a place preventers, like I said, so that there's not a knee-jerk reaction. We've um, improved our hydration program. We have fresh ice water available that we do the ice pass three times a day to make sure that they enough cold liquids to drink. We have a strong customer service focus. Um, Jesse did some education with his staff about customer service and the kind of service that you would receive in a restaurant. We have snacks and meals that are made from scratch. So we have cookies, cakes, bars for most of the meals, and then those are also provided during coffee time. Um, they're not box items. You, you know, like I said, they make them from scratch. Um, also, they've also moved to making their meals from scratch. They don't use box items, so they'll put together the recipe and not use um, items that come pre-prepared. We have resident and family involvement in any changes in weight that we notice. Um, we keep residents and families well informed. Um, we get a lot of comments that, you know, by the time their care conference comes around, they don't feel like they need to need to come because they already know what's going on with the residents. Um, and the collaboration between dietary and nursing staff is really key. We, we wouldn't be sitting here if we if dietary and nursing didn't work well together. Um, nursing can't do this independently of dietary, and dietary can't do it independently of nursing. It's a really strong working professional relationship that has allowed us to do this. And you can go to the next slide. Um, we use in individualized interventions, so we talk to the residents about what they like to eat. Sometimes they want ice cream. Sometimes, um, you know, they don't like boost, so they, you know, want some pudding or um, they want a certain kind of snack. Um, staff education, we also did, um, Jesse's boss came and did um, education for my staff, for the nursing staff, on the importance of the snacks and how it impacts someone that's older if they're not getting enough, enough nutrition. Um, we also altered our snack cart items that are available based on resident and staff input. Before, we didn't have ice cream available or uh, yogurt or cheese or jello available on the snack cart. And those are some suggestions that came, and sandwiches, yep, that came from resident and staff input. So all of those items are available on the snack cart at night. I talked about the enhanced hydration program and family involvement and support is crucial. Um, all departments and staff need to work together for common goals. Like I said, Jesse's department couldn't do this without nursing, and my department couldn't do it without dietary. And it really takes a, a team, and change happens slowly, and that can really be frustrating. Um, next slide. Um, so how we knew that the, that the change, that we had an improvement, resident and family satisfaction survey results. We send discharge surveys out uh, upon discharge, and we ask questions about the food, you know, their overall experience, but we do have some specific questions for dietary. Um, we also ask at every care conference, is, are you getting enough to eat? Are you getting the items that you like? Is it the right temperature? Um, and any suggestions that are brought forward at the care conferences, Jesse takes that back to his department and implements those. Um, weight data, um, we are seeing a stability in weight. Um, we are seeing an increase in food and fluid intake. And as Mary mentioned, too, we are also seeing improved bowel function by eating better meals. Next slide. Oh, and that does it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. I'll turn it over now to Ben. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I've been with Crawford Continuing Care about a year and a half now. Uh, the way we decided to go with uh, working on our weight loss program is review of our quality assurance uh, performance improvement meeting. We noted that our quality measures were flagging for the amount of unplanned weight loss within the facility. <clears throat> and uh, there have been a lot of uh, change in ownership and a lot of new faces to key positions in the facility, so we 
needed to work together to get a plan in place to take to uh, get our weight loss down. Next slide, please. Uh, changes we made. The biggest thing we, we did we got is early detection. We weigh our, our new residents initially upon admission, and then again within 24 hours. And all of our new admissions we weigh for a minimum of four weeks at, at, every week. Um, if, if the patient or resident stays stable, then we will just continue the, the weekly weight to move on to a monthly monitoring or every two-week monitoring, just depending on the, on the patient's case. Uh, we full time we have a full time dietitian in the center, which is extremely helpful in helping us come up with uh, interventions, patient centered interventions, to help reduce our number of weight loss as well. Um, we use a lot of supplements within the facility. We use some Ensure. We use a lot of ice cream shakes, a lot of, of patient centered interventions that the, that the patient decides they want, the resident decides they want. And, and uh, supplements that they'll actually accept, so we know that they'll it'll uh, serve its purpose. Next slide, please. Uh, we implemented the process of passing many small snacks throughout the day. We find a lot of residents and patients get very overwhelmed with the size of the meals or the dining room experience, or sometimes just the, the tray being set in front of them in general. So <clears throat> what we've done, we have a fully stocked pantry. We have many food items in and uh, a lot of small stack, snacks that we offer a few times per shift so residents can, can choose any snacks they want through the day so they can keep their calorie count up. And it's been quite effective using that process. Our interdisciplinary team, we track resident weight changes at the two pound marks. So it's plus or minus two pounds, we, fl we flag that resident's chart. And we do review them in our weekly IDT team meeting for residents at risk for weight loss. So this has helped us quite a bit on getting that early detection to try to see what's going on with the resident. And then, you know, a number of things can cause this weight loss. We found, you know, a few come up with, uh, while we're in the GDR process, the psychotropic medications as a flag residents for weight loss. We're able to put two and two together and, and, and get the weight loss resolved. Um, we oh, uh, we reviewed our company policy and procedure, and when we looked at it, it, it definitely wasn't being followed to its full extent. So as we, as we put our coffee plan together, we incorporated the company policy and procedure into our into our coffee plan, and we were able to come up with a, good, a successful intervention to to uh, reduce our weight loss. Next slide, please. Uh, um. <clears throat> Some of the biggest things we got out of this was consistent weights. We were having trouble getting consistent weights. Um, every staff member, clinical staff member in the building, CNAs and nurses, are trained on using our weight scales. <clears throat> However, we we found we got a lot more accurate information when we assigned one CNA to complete the, the weekly weights and daily weights, and then we have one alternate aid that, that does it in her absence. Um, and if they, we, we have everybody else that's trained to use the weights, but we have a full-time bath CNA. And the uh, waste that she provides us has, has just been excellent. The accuracy has been great. And it's been, been able to help us give a lot more accurate information to give a lot more accurate interventions for these patients. Uh, we had a lot of training involved with the IDT team members, so they knew their role in our weight loss prevention program. Um, a lot of a lot of IDT thinks it's 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 the clinical. Uh, team's responsibility, but it's not. We all know it's everybody in the facilities. Um, everybody can notice the subtle change in the resident. It doesn't doesn't have to be a clinician that does that. It can be a business office manager who has a relationship or or an activities director. Anyone anyone who's who's involvement with the residents can notice some subtle changes in them. Um, the tracking and monitoring of supplement usage and acceptance. There was a lot of supplements being administered, and there was no. Data showing what did the, the resident drink the supplement? Did they take any of it all? Are we throwing it away every time we administer it? So we put in a place where we have tracking. You know, so every supplement that's administered by nursing is tracked to the percentage that the resident accepted. So we know if the supplement's working, if the resident doesn't like it, or so we can move on to a. If we need be, we can move on to a different intervention. Next slide, please. Um. Some of the things we learned out of this is very important to follow the policy and procedures. We, when we looked at, when we found the problem, 
and we ran it through our quality assurance. We one of the main things, the reasons that we, that we were flagging in this this area was we weren't following the policy and procedures appropriately. So most most every company out there has policy and procedures for reducing weight loss, and most of the times we follow them, we do pretty well with that. Um, validation of interventions, it's very important to validate the interventions. Again, we you know supplements were being administered, and there was no way to tell through no uh, no. Uh, uh, record of what the resident had taken in or if they've taken any at all, so we don't know if they're working. I know we've probably all been in the area where we're doing anything and everything for this patient to prevent the weight loss, and they're still losing. And come to find out, they weren't accepting their supplement, so we were able to move on and get a different intervention in place and then see the weight stabilize or actually increase. And the, the last biggest thing was the early detection and timely intervention. The, the earlier we detect the problem, the quicker we got the intervention in place, the more we <clears throat> stopped any weight loss, any further weight loss, or we were, we uh, the resident actually gained weight. So those are the, the biggest important things we learned from this focus. Next slide. Um, we validated our quality plan with this, this information right here. Uh, April through September 2014, we were at 6.46%, which we're, we're quite a small building. We're only 39 beds, so... That's that's a pretty significant number for us. And then April through September 2015, our quality measure was at zero percent. So our our plan worked quite effective. Next slide. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. That was great. And now I'll turn it over to Lee and Angela. Hello, um, I'm Lee, the director of nursing over at Meadow Ranch in Milford. I actually started out here as a staff nurse about eight years ago. I'll be the director of nursing in August. It'll be a year. Um, and so this is my buddy, Angela, the dietitian. How long have you been here? I've been here two years. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Angela. Uh, so I'm the registered dietitian in the building. I am full-time. And uh, the reason that we decided to focus on this area was as a team, um, just to work proactively and determine weight loss, um, factors that were influencing uh, our unintentional weight loss numbers. Um, you can skip to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, the goal was to identify early warning signs and evaluate if residents' individual needs are being met with the current uh, plan of care, and overall just noticing trends and trying to be as proactive as we can. Next slide. So as a uh, interdisciplinary team, we had uh, we have weekly meetings with our DON, unit managers, MDS coordinators, social workers, activities coordinators, myself, um, and our head of therapy. So overall, it's really every single team uh, member is, is present and participant. Um, they are daily. We have rotating SOCs in the afternoon. We have clinical meetings and a morning meeting every morning. So uh, overall, everybody's communication is great, and everybody tries to stay on the same page. Um, log documenting names, dates, wounds present, IV fluids, any tube feeding, hydration issues. Um, if somebody's coming in with weight loss or gain, um, and any changes in health or mood, uh, we try to have a leg up on it from the very beginning with our admission assessments and um, morning meetings and anybody that's coming into the building that maybe is predisposed to weight loss or weight changes. Um, as a dietitian, I monitor these logs uh, pretty much daily as well as weight. Uh, and again, by just uh, reviewing the plan of care and staying updated with any recommendations. We try to be very proactive about it. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so as far as short-term evaluations implemented uh, to determine eating utensils or uh, assistant needs, diet consistency, um, Again, with the IDT team, uh, I'll usually refer to therapy for any adaptive devices that a resident may need, um, any recommendations for assistance with self-feeding, um, that their diet is appropriate as far as speech goes. Um, 
I monitor food acceptance, weight, lab monitoring. Our chef attends resident council for food preferences and trends. Uh, social work really monitors behavior and moods. And again, we all inform each other um, of what this could be impacting. Is it impacting somebody's PO intake negatively? Uh, do they not want to leave their room and they don't want to come down to the dining area anymore, anything like that? Uh, nursing really has a hand in monitoring skin, dentition, if their dentures are fitting correctly, um, any GI issues uh, that I should be made aware of. They do a great job of informing me, and we work together uh, to try and address that, that issue. Um, also, I think a big part of it is that the SENA and dietary staff feel very comfortable notifying managers, uh, including myself, and we're very visible and available um, in the building so that they can tell us if they're working one-on-one -on -one with a resident and they need additional help or preferences, anything like that, and any changes. So next slide. Um, so the dietitian, myself, and uh, nursing staff monitor their food acceptance again. Um, with first-hand staff, the CNAs and dietary staff notifying us uh, of any recent changes. Uh, our chef, Gary, actually greets new residents on admission for their preferences, any special dietary restrictions, um, cultural or religious needs that we need to be aware of, and uh, to confirm any food allergies that we also need to be very aware of. Um, all of my recommendations are approved by the physician. I speak with the phys physician and the ID team regularly and daily um, so everybody's aware uh, and uh, aware of all the supplement orders, labs, and therapy evaluations that are coming up, uh, as well as the daily meetings we have, just coming prepared. Um, and kind of being ahead of the curve for all the meetings is uh, another approach that we take to this. On the next slide, um, you can see that our weight change and weight percent does have some fluctuations, but overall uh, we are below the state and land averages. Um, and this partially is contributed to uh, are attributed to our quality improvement measures that we take. It focuses, um, I guess it's focused on just how we can address any problems. It's evolving is what I'm trying to say. So uh, whatever our QA is that month, it can be flexible. If it's are we following our admission weight procedure, is it the reweight policy, uh, it's something that's an evolving QA that we're constantly looking at and trying to find the root of any procedure disconnect. Um, the following slide is uh, just the workout of that previous graph. Um, as you can see, we try to maintain uh, as little unintended weight loss as possible, but uh, it does happen try to just prevent as much as we can, stay uh, in front of that curve. And the last slide is the quality principles, uh, identifying, again, that evolving quality problems or areas to improve, uh, using the data that we collect, again, having the IDT team there and approaching and just overall making sure everybody's monitoring and staying up to date on those changes. Oh. <clears throat> All right, thank you very much, Lee. That was great. I want to uh, just turn it over uh, to uh, Kathy Nichols from Strata South, Minnesota, uh, for uh, just, um, uh, just to wind it up. Thanks, Kathleen. Our thanks to each of you for sharing with us today. I, I just want to take a minute to talk about how what we've heard relates to the quality assurance and performance improvement, or QAPI principles, we've learned about throughout this collaborative. We've heard how each home identified a quality problem or area to improve, which was addressing unintended weight loss, 
improving residents' nutritional and clinical needs, or improving residents' and family satisfaction with meals and the dining experience. Some of the ways they did this was by using data from their quality measures, monitoring resident weights over time, and assuring those weights were timely and accurate, getting input from residents, families, and staff, monitoring meal intakes, and assessing resident satisfaction with meal choices and the dining experience. Each home described how they used an interdisciplinary team approach to look at the data and incorporated, incorporated it into weekly and daily IDT meetings. We heard of system changes that led to improvements, such as increased interdisciplinary team involvement and increased and improved weight monitoring and brainstorming around interventions for residents at risk. Input from residents, families, and staff led to other system changes, from menu rotation schedules to expectations for staff engagement at meetings, when and how weights were done, and meals offered. There were several examples of PDSA cycles with menu rotations, meal selection choices that were both ahead of time and on demand, and how to improve team functioning. Sharing successes at team meetings, care conferences, and with all staff has supported ongoing motivation and engagement of residents and their families. We've also heard of the need for ongoing monitoring. Each home has described why this area is important to them. They have enhanced many systems to gain their improvements, and I'm assured through their enthusiasm and descriptions that they would all say they will continue to work on improvements in these areas. Next slide, please. We also want to remind you about the change package, that group of strategies for quality improvement. And this, this topic area reminded us about um, one of the strategies, which is make visible and talk about how different processes and activities are interrelated and part of the system. Now I'd like to turn it back over to Kathleen, who will open up for discussion. Thank you, Kathy, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today for applying to API principles, Solutions for Unimpaired Weight Loss. I'd like to thank all of our speakers today for sharing their success stories with all of you. This recording will be available on our Lake Superior QIN YouTube page within the next week. At this time, we'd like to take questions and answers. And uh, Emily, if you could please bring up the evaluation. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, if you would like to ask a question, please press the number one key. Once again, if you would like to ask a question, please press the number one key. Our first question comes from Jennifer Brownell with Bridges of Appleton. Please go ahead. Have any of you had success using red plates as an intervention to promote uh, appetite and therefore increase caloric intake? Were any of our speakers like to address there? Did you hear the questions? Uh, this is Lee from Milford. I know we have never used it, but it sounds interesting. It's a thought. What is it called again? Red plate. Well, would you like to share that with us? Sure. We uh, found a study out of Boston University that said that the use of red plates increased uh, intake 24%, a uh, study out of Boston University. So we started using them on... February 1st, we've not had any weight loss in our dementia unit. In fact, we've had so much gain that we've had to take some of the residents off <laughs> the red plate. So then we expanded that into other areas of our building as appropriate. Some people, not everyone needs a red plate, but um, we've found success with that. It's fabulous. It's a, yeah. a, a practical, easy-to-do uh, solution or intervention. And what state are you in? Wisconsin. That is excellent. Our next question comes from Julie Oregon with Good Samaritan. Please go ahead. Julie, your line may be muted. Yes, sir. We're here. I have a question. Actually, I have a couple. 
questions. But I have one for Mary, um, the first the presentation. When she was talking, she gets the information from the dietary staff and they forward that to the registered dietitian. Um, what's the positions of the dietary staff that she's getting the information from? I mean, are they the, the ones that are serving? Are they the cooks? Mary, are you there? Mary has dropped off. Oh, okay. I have another question. If you want to have a different question. On the second presentation, um, the one for the overall dining experience, uh, and you're going to the tables and you're taking orders like in a restaurant, and you have a menu and stuff, how do you account for special diets? Like if some done an altered um, texture, that kind of thing? But we have a, a list in back so we know who's mechanical soft, who's prey, who's a regular. So when we go up there, we just base it off of that. Um, so we get like a different menu? Well, it's, it's, you know, it's all the same menu, um, but we okay. but we just grind, you know, we take all the, all three options available. So okay. then if they do get a, a special item, like off the alternate menu, we actually will or grind that up also. Okay, and I have one more question. Are you able to cook, um, like I know in Minnesota we're restricted on what types of foods we can cook right on the unit, and I think um, one of the people we're doing for breakfast specialty eggs, hey, however you wanted them, are you able to cook right on the unit, or does it come from a, from a centralized kitchen? So then we actually, we cook everything in the main kitchen, and then... Um, we have a, like a system living and a, an independent living down there, which then we will fry up what they want down there. So if someone wants a poached egg, we'll actually um, transfer it down in our in our hot box down there to them to be able to access from there. But no, not right on the unit we cannot. Okay. And um, just to let you know, Mary, I believe a little bit early, but she did give us permission to share her email address, and it has been entered into the chat uh, section there so that if you have questions uh, that you can answer here today, you could email your questions to her. Uh, and this is Christy. I'm just taking uh, one of the questions that came on the chat. And, again, Jesse, as long as you were there, you might be able to answer. Somebody asked of your home, what do you do for supplements? Well, currently right now, some of the supplements we got really is Boost. Um, super protein. Um, we do a, a pro source with a protein for a supplement. Um, Benet protein. That's kind of our main four that we, we use. Thanks. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you would like to ask a question, please press the number one key. We have no further questions at this time. Okay, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. I hope you were able to get some good solutions out. Again, I want to thank our speakers so much for sharing. And please don't forget to do the evaluation poll. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes your call. You may disconnect at this time.